Welcome to the GCN show. Coming up, race roundups from. <clears throat> Sorry, something. <laughs> Welcome to the GCN Show. Coming up, race roundups from the Tour Down Under, the Tour San Luis, plus the Cyclocross World Cup. Yeah, there's some good news for Sammy Sanchez, and in tech news, we take a look at some new helmets in the peloton. Yeah, and don't forget all our usual features like comment, caption, <laughs> tweet of the week, and of course, Strava Club. Plus, scab watch, considerably small this week too. It's a bit gross, mate. Lights. Turn the light on. Camera. Action. Okay, uh, GCN one. Extra here because Lance Armstrong is back in the news. The BBC News, to be precise, in his first in depth interview since admitting to doping to Oprah Winfrey. Now, he spoke at length to Dan Rowan and admitted that those two years since had been somewhat harder than he had expected. Yeah, and asked if he would dope again. He said that he probably wouldn't if racing in the current era, but if he faced uh, the same circumstances as he did back in the 1990s, that he actually would dope again. Now, by his own admission, that isn't exactly what people want to hear and is bound to cause a stir, to say the least, in the world of cycling. Yeah, I mean, his return to the spotlight begs the question, why is he doing it? I can't imagine Lance doesn't have an agenda behind all of this. So, what is it? Is it a desire to return to public life? Is he after you know, his, having his ban lifted? Is he just after forgiveness? Now let us know what you think in the comments section because we certainly don't know what we think yet and we've been discussing it for the last half an hour. But now we'll leave you to get on with the rest of the show that we filmed earlier on and we can actually go home. Yeah, I'll continue thinking about it on my commute home, I think. I'll just get stuck in traffic. I'll get back to you tomorrow. Cheers. See ya. Bye. <laughs> I'd laugh at that. The Tour Down Under is done and dusted. The first World Tour race of the year saw some really highly contested racing and an Australian clean sweep of all the podium places. Yeah, composite national team Uni SA punched well above their weight. They took stage one with Jack Bobridge, who also won the King of the Mountains, and stage four with Steele Von Off. Meanwhile, Richie Port for the second year running won the Queen stage, finishing up Wollonga Hill. He wasn't, however, quite quick enough to dislodge BMC's Rowan Dennis, who'd taken the stage win on stage three and the race lead with it. And we've also got to give a bit of a shout out to the legend that is Cadell Evans, riding his last World Tour race, finishing third overall, and he will round out what's been pretty much a glittering career at the inaugural Cadell Evans Great Ocean Road Race this week. Walter Whippet of Drapak took the final stage in a fantastic week for them. And make sure you catch our highlights if you haven't seen any of the action. Dennis holding the trophy aloft in front of huge crowds in Adelaide. That's it for our race reports this week. Thanks to the Tour Down Under for supplying us with official race footage. Finally, thanks to you for watching our coverage. And don't forget if you want to see more race reports this season, just give this video a thumbs up. <laughs> Caption competition now, and we have the results of last week's competition. Congratulations to Liam Faney with this one. Dan's number one way to scare off wheel suckers. Dan, can you give it to us live? I'm not so good when I'm just having to do it. Really, really. Unenthusiastic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Try a bit we'll go harder. back to the other video if you want. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this week's photo for you to all have a go with is this one of Yanni Brakovic in the Tour de San Luis with his helmet on with a load of ice on top of it. Uh, once again, we shall get you started. Look guys, I told you I am not hot-headed. It's good that, isn't it? The problem yeah, is that sure all the viewers feel defeated before they've even started because better. my captions are just yeah. so good. Well, Look. judging by the fact that we had over 400 entries last week, I suggest that they probably don't feel defeated. They're probably quite inspired to, you know, go one better you than that. You enter under another name as well, Dan. I've heard the rumour that you do. There's a guy on there who's you calling himself is. The Boss. Yeah. That might be Dan. I've got millions of caps at home now. <laughs> <laughs> Mathieu van der Poel looked in excellent form this weekend in the final round of the Cyclocross World Cup, which took place in Hugerhard. Now, he broke away very early in the race and was never seen again, taking victory by over a minute from Walt van Aert with Jani Vermeers in third. And Kevin Powell's fourth on the day was enough for him to seal the overall World Cup. Yeah, I reckon the fact that Van Aert and van der Poel are both riding elite at the forthcoming World Championships makes that battle look really, really tasty. Now, both riders, as I'm sure you can actually tell, 
are still under 23, but they've both given up the right to ride in that category to have a proper tilt at the World Championships for the senior men. And in terms of who the favourites are for that race, well, me and Tom are actually going to take a quick look at that this week, so make sure you keep your eyes peeled on Thursday. Yeah, and over in the women's race, it was mountain biker Eva Lechner who took the win. Now, she was second at last year as well, so she's shown that she knows how to peak, and she's got great form going into this weekend's race. Second place on the day went to Katerina Nash, with third going to Pauline Ferran Prevot. Sana can't the revelation really in women's racing this winter, which she recovered from a last lap crash to finish fourth. <laughs> The most prolific new tech at the recent Tour Down Under was in actual fact helmets. There were no fewer than three manufacturers that had new lids on display. Giant had this uh, aerodynamic lid that was uh, being sported uh, very well actually by Marcel Cattell. And then Bontrager also had a less visible but arguably better looking helmet, again aerodynamic. Now that was actually first seen uh, on Jens Vogt during his uh, world record breaking hour. Yeah, and it does go to show you just how far the riders at the moment are willing to go for aerodynamics. Mm. Given how hot it was down in Adelaide for that week, obviously going fast is better than having a cool head. Uh, but before we finish with helmets, Team Lamprey have also got some new lids this year. Suomi is an Italian brand and they have been around for a while, haven't done bike helmets until this year. Their history is in motorsport and surprisingly they've also supplied an Olympic skeleton team of helmets for aerodynamics. Plus remember, no vents means nice hair. Is it? Mm. Well, the wind blows in, disturbs your hair. Maybe you know, Marcel Kittel aero maybe, helmet yeah. keeps but, his. Uh, no, keeps hang on a minute. Doesn't it, it, maybe you should get a helmet with no vents then, Matt. <laughs> but it squashes the top and then it all pushes out the side. Oh, no. That's not a good look either. I, mean, I saw Marcel at the finish, his hair was immaculate. Uh, I'm super happy that it worked out today. There is a new sprint kid on the block. Youngster Fernando Gaviria doesn't even have a pro contract yet, but last week at the Tour de San Luis, the 20-year-old outshone world tour opposition, taking two stage wins. Yeah, Mark Cavendish, who finished second to him on both occasions, paid his compliments to the Colombian speed and acceleration. But Gaviria does have some pedigree. He's a former junior world track champion, both in the Omnium and the Madison, and he finished second in the points competition at the Tour de l'Avenir last year. But Mark Cavendish did win stage seven, getting her, his first win of the season. Meanwhile, on the general classification, it was Daniel Diaz of Argentina who took his second overall victory in the race after dominating both of the mountain top finishes. Meanwhile, last year's winner, Nara Quintana, came home in third. Strava Club now and Cycle Doctor One is still at the top of the leaderboard for total distance ridden last week. And in fact, he's well on target to break the world record for the total distance ridden in one month. And if you want to know more about Bruce, head over to Cycling Tips because they've done a great little interview with him. Yeah, I think we should also have a bit of a special mention to third place in that competition this week, which is Tom Davies. He's now nine days into his attempt at riding around the world. So best of luck to you, Tom. Indeed, and Pham Dang Song did an epic ride of 500 kilometres this week around Ho Chi Minh City. And for the climbing competition, and that goes to Alan Nevin, who climbed an amazing 22,000 metres around Arnold in California. That wasn't his friend, it's a place. A tweet from Giant Alpacin's Tom de Moulin during the recent Tour Down Under has sparked a little bit of a debate amongst us. Here's what he had to say. By the way, the stages in the Tour Down Under make me realise again that short stages are much more interesting to do and watch. So, chaps, what's your two penneth? I think it's a really valid point. I mean, it does fundamentally change the way the race is approached and, and, and raced, of course. I think about eight years ago, the Vuelta a Spaniard dramatically slashed the distances of the stages and I think took about 800k off the total distance. But the race from that point on changed fundamentally, the way it was viewed and the way it was raced. I mean, it just promotes aggressive, uh, very, very different style of racing. Mm. Yeah, I sort of agree. I do like that aggressive race. I certainly wouldn't want the classics changing, for example. No, Those one-day races like San Remo, Roubaix, Flanders, for me, are all about, actually, that they're a real test of endurance and more than 250 k's. I think there is still a place for certain long stage in the tour, yeah. but actually something I would quite like to see is perhaps a long 220k plus day in the mountains where people are kind of on their knees and fatigued, followed by a really short well, stage where you're almost forced to attack or go hard from the gun the next day. I think that would really kind of show up some chinks in people's arms. But uh, yeah, interesting point of discussion. Yeah, absolutely. I think with you know the smaller, less prestigious stage races, without doubt, shorter stages are the way to go. But what do you think, guys? Let us know in the comments section down below, and uh, yeah, tell us what you're uh, feeling about this.
Time for comment of the week now. Thanks once again for all of you who've got involved commenting under the various videos on our channel. The first comment of the week comes from Andrea Thomas. She said underneath the video of Peter Sagan's bike, flight deck, laugh at that. Seriously though, the bar tape is distressing me. Prefer it to match the saddle or frame rather than Matt's bandage. Or is it supposed to match Pete's white jersey? And those cranks look a bit scratched already. The season's only just started. Well, thanks for that, Andrew. But another comment here from Year Wart. This one looks like a man, I can tell by his beard. Uh, he says, and it's underneath the video, How to Beat Your Riding Mates by Devious and Nefarious Means, works better with Deirdre. I can see Deirdre now, Lorraine has gone. I can see clearly now, <laughs> Lorraine has gone. <laughs> or, I can see Deirdre now, Lorraine has gone. I think it works better, clearly. I can move all obstacles in my way. I can see clearly now, <laughs> the rain has gone. <laughs> Never thought that Phil Collins would be a... Uh, <laughs> I don't think uh, that's the right now. <laughs> Phil Collins would be a better uh, substitute than Matt there, but I wish, wish we had Phil right now. Former Olympic champion Sammy Sanchez has again been pulled from the brink of retirement by BMC, from whom he rode last year, of course, finishing the season very strongly indeed, with sixth place at the Vuelta and fifth place in the Tour of Lombardy. Now, old Golden Shoes himself opened this year's race account with the Cadell Evans Ocean Classic Road Race. We're we going to pick him up on Cadell. Well, <laughs> great, the great Ocean Road Race, not the. It's it Cadell Evans, and it's what's the name of the race? Cadell Evans. C Cadell Evans. Great Ocean Road, road race. race. Anyway, it's Cadell's big race. On the channel this week, Wednesday, it's how to find the perfect route to ride. If you're new to cycling and you're not sure you're getting the most out of your local roads, or you're a very experienced rider who is simply getting bored with doing the same old routes, or you're off on holiday with your bike, here are our tips on how to find it the perfect routes to ride. Thursday, top 10 riders to watch out for at the upcoming Cyclocross World Championships. Yeah, and on Friday, we're going to look at the bikes that are going to be raced this year by the women's peloton. And on Saturday, we're also going to take a look at another bike, this time the Focus Cyclocross used by Jeremy Powers. This is Jeremy Powers Focus Mares CX, American Champion Special Edition Cyclocross bike. Let's have a closer look. Yeah, Sunday's off the back is going to be our most embarrassing videos. And then... Um, I haven't got... I haven't got an embarrassing video, I don't think. Never embarrass myself in GC. Well, there we go then. <laughs> Good off, luck finding that. Off the back is going to be great this week. Uh, and then uh, on Monday, we've got how to service your jockey wheels. And then Tuesday, anyone know what Tuesday is? Um, no. Right. Someone has, you didn't right. write it Did in, I? Matt. I, uh, Tuesday. Just... The Tour of California last week announced the teams that will be competing in the 10th edition of the race this year. Most of the big names you'd expect are there, but there was a surprise on that list, which was the fact that Team Airgas Safeway, the new home of Chris Horner, will not be at the race. Yeah, and Horner actually spoke to Peloton magazine and he didn't hold back on his criticism towards the race organisers. Here's what he had to say. They've done harm to the race by not bringing me. You've left the only current rider with a Grand Tour resume who's going to show up and I'm a past champion there. Well, what do you think? Should Horner be at the Tour of California, or were the organisers right to invite other teams? You decide. Tweet of the week this week comes from Geraint Thomas of Team Sky. Now, G says, thought it was raining at times today. Turns out it was just Ian Stannard sweating in front of me. Hashtag hot. I know how that feels. I was walking behind Sky the other day. Oof, yeah, I personally don't like that tweet. I think that's really a, like me. Generally, you know, what, Ian was probably just trying hard, you mm. know? He does just, that very yeah. well indeed. He might have been a bit nervous at the same might time. Might be a condition made that excessive sweating. Extreme corner this week. Check out this incredible jump and save by Joel Moore. That's the end of a day's filming. <laughs> I wonder if he had his brakes on the wrong way around. Yeah, man. nasty. Held it up, though. Yeah, he did hold it up. That's like, how you hold it up. He, yeah, he that. probably did borrow a bike, so I think you're right. I don't reckon. He's probably got no scabs either. <laughs> I'd laugh at that. 
Well, I'm afraid to say that's it for this week's show. But before we do go, a big shout out to Lawson Craddock. He unfortunately broke his sternum at the Tour de Under in a bad crash. So get well soon, Lawson. And we hope to see you back racing very soon. Yeah, now if you want to see more GCM videos, and I'm sure you do, why not click up there and go through to a recent collaboration we did with the Sorted Food Channel. We, along with their help, created the ultimate post-ride recovery cake. Yeah, and click down there to go over to their video, which is us two racing tandems with their presenters. Who was the fastest, actually? Who's the fastest GCN uh, presenter? You say it then. Uh, I was the... No. I mean, I'm going to do it. Anyway, and to become a fan of GCN, click on me. Remember, it's absolutely free. And tell everybody, tell your friends, tell your family, bring them all on board. The more, the merrier. Can't I click on any of those? Why has it got to be you? No, it's clicking on me, please. The fastest GCN presenter tandem pilot. Bar none. Sorry, mate. He finishes now. Still a boss.